are recording. Hey, I'm Superfizz. I have been patiently waiting for the past 72 hours as Michael set up a test box. Uh, we want to demonstrate the installation of the remote miner in Dark Forest. Uh, this comes with a big announcement from ETH Staker that we are rebranding. Uh, we are now ETH Staker and Dark Forest. Uh, so we, we feel like we've we've kind of maxed out our potential in ETH Staker and we're ready for something with New Horizons and Dark Forest seems like the solution. I'm full of crap, by the way, but it, I'm, at least I'm having fun. Hey, I was Michael. Just, just thinking like pull-up designs then, just like a... a Dark Forest meets East Staker Poop somehow. Yeah, yeah, just fit it all together. I mean, if we were to talk about what's really most important in our lives, like eh, right now it's Dark Forest. I mean, <laughs> I mean, sure, there's all this promise of like not having to work and collecting returns and <laughs> inheritance for our children, but right now it's Dark Forest. So um, here's what we know. Uh, in Dark Forest, there is a native miner. It's called, it's it's on the lower left, it's called Explore. It turns on by default when you launch the browser. Um, and I never wanna say a product sucks because somebody wrote this and like they put their time into it. And if it didn't exist, we wouldn't have anything, but it's, it's a relatively underpowered miner. Oh. Hashes. Caught your first leg. <laughs> Did I lag? Yeah, you lagged. <laughs> I am keeping that in the edit, oh, too. Oh, okay. Well, so the Nick, at least I know it's not that Nick. Yeah. Uh, well, but it has been a while, though. Yeah, no, it has. Um, so anyway, I call this a miner because it does a hash, and it does provide a result, and that result ends up being uh, space and planets and all that gobbledygook. Uh, but what we know is that the native browser miner is really weak, or I say it's weak. I mean, it's just, it is what it is, but you can mine a whole lot faster by using a command line browser, um, even doing that on a remote crawler. So I don't actually do any crawling on the machine I'm playing with uh, because the game already gets really intensive. And right now my map is like 120 megs and it kind of lags my browser pretty hard. So I actually mine on a couple other um, computers, and we're going to go through the setup for that with Michael. The pre-wek pre the pre requisites for that are um, kind of some kind of Linux distribution. I always like Linux server. I'm uh, sorry, Ubuntu server, and um, a browser. You ready? I think Can so. Can we document this? I guess you'll put it in the comments, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we should start really in Chrome. If you'll pull up Chrome real fast, the, the, the browser you're actually playing from. All right. And because of, uh, I think it's hardware acceleration is the reason that Chrome natively runs this Explorer faster. Um, it runs the browser brace based Explorer faster. Are you okay. gonna share that? Uh, oh yeah, you want me to do it via Zoom? Sure, no yeah. problem. Because the first thing we have to do, and this is the thing that, um, the first time you do it, it's going to aggravate you because it seems like your miner's not working. So begin with this. Go click on that lock up there beside the URL and choose site settings. And scroll down to allow uh, mixed content or something. Scroll down, 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 down. Uh, insecure content, allow. Okay, now you're going to have to start your browser for that to actually kick in like close yeah and so what this does uh it allows you to connect your browser session to that miner um without it you will spin forever and never actually hash now it still looks okay uh that lock go ahead and get in your game because that lock suggests that it's still enabled Okay, that's fine. Ignore me. Oh, no, that's just an HTTPS lock. I'm just, I'll stop. Okay. Um, well, because mine actually shows up saying not secure. Um, 
Okay, so we did step one. We enabled insecure content. That did not change like I thought it would. Uh, I thought that it would, would show the hazard sign with the not secure, but if we run into a problem with that later, we'll work on it. Okay. Second thing is stop the native hasher because it, um, it slows Christmas and it's just gonna end up slowing your browser down. Um, okay, so now we have disabled the, the local miner and we have uh, allowed insecure content. Now we want to go to the remote server, the one where you're actually going to be mining from. Okay. So let me... Uh, this is the remote server. Awesome. Um, okay, so there, do you have the directions that I pasted to you in Discord or do you want me to read them out loud? Uh, let me pop Discord up real quick. So you're gonna begin with installing some bare minimums and that is build essential screen and git. If you did an actual server install, you probably already have screen and git, but it never hurts. Uh, those aren't installed by default on Ubuntu desktop, but they are installed by default on server. Okay. Okay, am I doing the uh, screenshot first or the uh, text that you sent first? Uh, they're the same. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, one of them is formatted and one of them isn't. So sudo apt install, uh, y just means do it without asking for approval. Um, build essential is some tools uh, for building software. Screen is called a, uh, like a session manager that it will allow us to pop into different um, sessions. So when you close this, it will still run and git is going to let us clone the repo. So let's run that. All right, so now we're gonna clone this repo that Jacob Rosenthal has. It's MIMC-fast. I do not know what MIMC stands for. I haven't really been worried about it yet. All right, and we're gonna CD into that. Now, before we install that, we need to install Rust and we're just gonna copy the one-liner Rust installer. And this really, um, wow, you can do that by hand. This, I'll, I'll check it for accuracy. This comes from um, the Rust site. It's just a standard uh, quick and easy Rust installer. Usually you copy paste it, but Michael is a... I feel, I feel like I'm getting simultaneously roasted uh, while doing this. That's You're hilarious. a hero. Okay, well, so you made me wait nine hours. <laughs> uh, okay, so we, we, uh, Michael and I actually agreed to do this like an hour ago, and he was like, okay, I need 10 minutes. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm there. Yep. And so I came, and I was like, all right. And I've been waiting. And, and so they finally we entered a screen session. I'm just watching him type forever, and I'm like, oh. Not, not his fault. Like, there is setup to do. Yep. I'm just... Uh, I'm just high strung. Just hit one. Okay. All right. All right. 
right. Um, and so that copy that line. To, oh, can you? No, you don't have copy paste ability right now, do you? I should be able to no, go down. So um, for cargo to run correct, I'm sorry. Yeah, for cargo, Rust, whatever to run correctly, um, you need to source the home directory. Um, what happened? No, because uh, the way I'm recording, I can't see you when I'm sharing, so I'm just cutting to you quick. So. Oh, well, now I can't see the screen. Uh, okay, so this uh, we need to source the home environment. And so that source, uh, dollar sign home slash dot cargo slash env needs to, you can run it now and you need to store it in your profile. So when you reboot that, it's still there. So go ahead and type that, copy that line in into the terminal right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, oh, you do have copy paste. Okay, hit enter. And now do nano space tilde slash dot prof profile. So you've sourced the home direct or the cargo directory once, but in order for you to be able to reboot and have the same thing, you need to also add it to your profile. So scroll to the bottom. Oh, it's already there. Beautiful. Um, we needed that, but we're great. Okay, so now we can install Rust. And so you'll do Rust up install. Actually, Rust was already installed, but we need to switch to the nightly um, build. Yeah. This is actually like so simple. Once you get it, it's like three seconds of copy paste done. Um, but getting familiar with it, like anything, takes a few minutes. Okay, great. Now the next thing we're gonna do is start a screen session. And the purpose of this is to allow the miner to run in the background when you disconnect from the server. There are a lot of ways to do this. Like you could do it as a, um, as a system daemon, but screen is just simple. So screen dash capital S and then whatever you wanna call that screen session. And then we're gonna run it. And it is now going to wait for um, connections as soon as it gets up and running. One of my favorite things to say is, this is so easy, I can do it. <laughs> That's funny, I was, I was just staring at the Dark Forest map and I'm, it's just funny compared to the call you had with, with Preston, seeing his map and what he's got outlined through the fog and then like I got my little cube it's like, oh man, I can't wait to get uh, some of this cleared up. Yeah, if you throw if you throw a lot of cores at it, it will expand very quickly. And so there's actually a trick to it. Um, you really want, rather than many in parallel, you really want a couple really powerful ones. So um, a lot of little ones end up tripping over themselves. But if you throw like some amd 5950 at it sure. it will uh some rise and it it just zooms through it hmm. chews through it no no joke i'm probably going to build another computer so i can play um dark force more eff eff effectively i hate waiting <laughs> sorry gosh <laughs> Not you. No, I'm, I'm playing no, I'm just over joking. here. This, I'm, I'm over here playing on this side. I'm trying to take a planet right now. We have this uh, East Chicago thing to that. I will probably be playing during that as well. So that's fair. Somehow, like that gives me uh, a sense of calm, actually. Almost there. takes a hundred to kick that let's see how strong that planet is if we have time i'd love to pick your brain with some noob questions okay and I, i'm not really an expert um i oh okay so we're ready on this yep um i'll tell you my, my actual interest in it in a little while why i let myself keep playing uh so you can uh, control AD out of this to exit the screen session, or you can leave it running and switch to something else, whatever. It might help to leave it up just in case we need to look at some output. Uh, so you're on your local box now, right? Yep. Okay, so now we want to test that we can connect to that. Okay. Um, oh, 
I thought I had a. Do I know what port that's running on? It's running on port 8000. Yeah, so um, do this. Do uh, telnet space and the, ad the address to that box. Uh, I don't remember. Hold, Do please. Control A D I P space A. Oh, I remember I was there. Okay. Uh, and then space eight thousand. Enter. Yep. Okay. So this is not connecting to that box for some reason. Okay. Let me. Something else, real quick. It's the longest password I've ever heard. Makes me feel better when it's uh. You know they, they have uh, algorithms that can listen to the keystrokes. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, it's no. I mean, it's it's for real. No, I know. That's okay. Uh, it's something that uh, I've thought about recently. God damn it! I you know. I don't, I was doing the telnet thing to just kind of be fancy for like, I know some people are gonna have trouble checking it. So it shouldn't be a SSH port, screw it. Let's, hmm, I'm thinking that port should have connected. And I don't always do it on my own, but I do believe that it, uh, Yeah, it does connect on mine, so you sh uh, So what I was trying to say is this is this guarantees that you actually have an open connection because a lot of times when you get into your browser and you're trying to establish the connection and it doesn't work, you don't know where it didn't work. Uh, so by doing this test, it tells us that Telnet from the local computer can actually connect to that port on the remote host. Um, but we're stuck. We don't know. We don't have ideas. Yeah, I want to check the... Um... Ports real quick, one second. One second. If all it sells and you decide to cut the video, you can just cut from like or not. I mean it's it's always good entertainment. I don't, so, oh, are you up? Drop that trash, man. Drop that uh, UFW. Okay. Pseudo UFW disable. Okay, so don't listen to me. You should never ever drop your firewall. Um, but what you could do is uh, add a rule for port 8000 from anywhere. Uh, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should tell people how to do that. All right, one second. I just assumed that UFW was not running. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, with this command, I'm checking the, whoops, I thought I enabled that. <coughs> so UFW is uncomplicated firewall. Um, Michael had it running and I was not aware that it was running. What it does is block ports and so the reason we couldn't connect to port 8000 from the remote machine is because it was blocked by UFW. So we're going to add a firewall rule to enable connections to port 8000. It should be something like sudo UFW allow all from. Yeah, oh, I was just on. trying to, I don't know if it's going to take with. Uh, 
with it being down. With what? Oh, yeah, I'm still right. Yeah, but it's not. Is it going to enforce, though? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, when we enable it. I, I mean, honestly, <clears throat> I don't really run a firewall on this kind of stuff because there's nothing valuable on it, uh, and it's in my local network. There we go. So, so we're, we're good now. Or at least the port's up. So now if we do the... Uh, Great. Ch -ch 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 uh, telnet, the... Well, so you're oh, on no, the no, local, I do it on, on yeah, the remote, yeah. 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 The um, right, 30, yeah. Woo! Okay, so we're in. You can control C that. That means that we can connect from your local instance to that port on the remote instance, and now you can head to your browser. Browser, browser, browser. Okay. All right, so now you need to go to plugins.zka.me. Zkga.me. And you're going to grab. Um, Crawl planets. Nope, wrong one. Scroll down. Remote Explorer. And just tap where it says raw. Down what? Yeah, right there. Do a control A, control C. And then go up to your plugins box, uh, the plugin icon in the top five, yeah. And you're gonna add a plugin. And click eight times, and add a plugin again. And so name it uh, Remote Crawler. Love it. Okay. And so do Control A, Control V. So we're going to clear that old stuff out, paste the new stuff in, and save it. And now you're going to hey well, let me wait 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 before you do that let's let's uh hmm let me think yep let's do it this way um uh, nope I need to show you how to run it natively and then we'll make it easier so um, <laughs> first let's run it natively does that mean here yep hit run yep okay we're gonna tweak this to make it a little easier to use but we'll wait until we. Um, Okay, so go ahead and type in HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.34 colon 8000 slash mine. Do a control A, control C of that so you have it in your buffer for in a minute. Okay. Because we're going to paste it somewhere else. Now hit explore. And we're just going to wait a minute. It should fire up. If you slide that to the right, all right, you're getting 8972. Uh, slide that window to the right, and you should see your uh, your little icon, or maybe you have to. Oh, I see what you're saying. OK, so you, you need to go ahead and set it. So click the targeter, and I would put it in the uh, not this one. We're not using this one at all anymore. Uh, I'm pointing with my finger. You can't see. Where Can I'm I get pointing. rid of this somehow? This window or no? No, I, I, I don't. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to, but I have, I, I'm stuck with it. Okay. Um, I usually cover it up with a planet view. So you want to click the targeter in the in the remote crawls box. Oh right, yeah, yeah sure. That targeter, and you want to drop it in the center of your existing box because that's going to. Um, you're actually in a good location because you're right near the edge of the of the universe. That's going to crawl around the perimeter of your existing box. Okay. And so it's about, right now it's about 10 times faster than your other miner. If you give it a minute, it will bounce yep, to the outside. And if you want to zoom, you can see that you're probably getting blocks that were a little bigger than you were getting before. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, so it, it is actually bigger. Um, it's about five times the width of your old band. When it gets mm -hmm. to a new row, it's going to, uh, you'll see that it's, it's a much bigger swath. 
I like that word, swath. <laughs> okay, uh, so I want to show you a problem and a solution. So when you X out of remote crawls, about the whole the whole window, close the plugin, and so now when you reopen the plugin, your stuff is gone. Gotcha. And so to simplify finding that, X out one more time. We're going to add it to the plugin directly. So go to edit and scroll down until you see the zero, 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 zero. It's near the bottom. Okay. Oh, oh, I saw it. Stop. Okay. And so replace that, replace that IP with your 192.168.1.34. Okay, and so you're eventually going to add a bunch more miners, and when you do that, uh, just for demo, uh, start a new line underneath that. And I think what works is if you do this dot ID equals one, the the row above that, you're creating a new element. In oh, there. I see if what you're saying. ID equals one, semicolon, and then copy this add miner and add a new instance of a new miner. Um, with a different IP, and you can iterate all over that. Uh, so if you have 10 miners, they would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nice. Um, but that was just for demo. So you can go ahead and hit save now. Can I leave the one? It needs to be there. Okay. What was it, zero before? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the first, one, the first element is zero. Okay. Was it zero or one? It was the zero. The first element of an array is always zero. What? It, I mean, it were, I, I had to change it to one. It was originally zero. Okay. Well, so I, let me be clear then. If we're adding another miner, you're gonna you're going to create another line that says this dot underneath that. You're gonna create this I, dot id equals one, and oh, is that all? Yeah. But so you're gonna have another this id before that. Oh. It happened. Yeah, it's I know. Two. I know. Okay, so I'm going to save this. All right, I'm done trying. All right, save. And now when you run the plugin, you're going to see your miner nice. there. Nice, 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 nice. And you can target it. So it looks like, oh, maybe not. Um, I don't know the logic that determines whether it, it automatically finds its location or not. Sometimes they just, I call them, they sort of heat up. Like that okay. one's not actually running yet. Oh, there we go. Okay, and so the gotchas here, the real big gotcha is, oh, and you'll see now that switch to not secure content because you have insecure content loading on the page. Mm. Um, the the first thing that my other buddy who was setting it up, he just, he, he said he had done it and he forgot, like he just, he, I guess he took it for granted. Um, and he was like, it's not working, it's not working. Um, but that is probably the only gotcha in all of this setup. Okay. Um, this is awesome, though. I could see this. Now it's ugh, it's feeding into the one addiction. Of, one of the other um, one of the other things I've discovered is if you have multiple remote miners, remote crawlers, um, you don't really want them tripping over each other because they, in many cases, appear to be processing the same space over and over. So as in, if there are five following the appearance, and I don't know the reality, but the appearance is that they just follow in line and reprocess the same space over and over. So you okay. want to stagger them somehow. So I would maybe run one like way over here or something? Yeah, uh, okay. something like that. Okay. That's pretty cool Can though. Can we do it? I think that's it. That's awesome. I also want to do one. Um, this might be more useful to the world. 